Anyone can have curiosity and you can exercise that curiosity no matter where you are, whether it's on a subway in New York City underground or you're out in the ocean or out in the field or a playground. Nature and science and physics and chemistry, they're all around us everywhere. It's paying attention to what's around you and asking those questions about how it works and what's going on. That's the key thing. You, you can make beautiful discoveries right in your backyard. If you look at the world around us, it's full of complexities and it's diverse and rich and everything so seems so different to everything else at first sight. It's hard to find the patterns, the commonalities. And yet the art of physics is to find those patterns and those things that make a collection of things behave in very similar ways to one another. We live and breathe science every day and an understanding of the way things work, whether it be you know, a gearbox in your car or a remote controlled uh, little toy or something, or why uh, water boils in a particular way, if it has some salt added to it or if it doesn't have salt added to it. I think all of this is science. And I think recognizing that we live in a world in which all of these things constantly surround us can make it a lot more uh, interesting uh, for children and, and for everyone. Most fundamentally, I think we do our best science when we're deeply curious about the problem. And I suppose in the most simple way, it's what gets you out of bed in the morning and makes you excited to be a scientist. And if you go and you choose a problem that you don't care about and you're not interested in, probably you're not going to do your best work. So finding something that you're passionate about, I think, leads to good science. Usually the problems that you want to solve in science are ones that nobody has ever done before. And so you're bound to make mistakes when you first try to solve the problem. The important thing is to have the persistence to, to work hard and to figure out what went wrong the first time so that you don't end up repeating that mistake again. But usually it's the mistakes that tell us, uh, that help to direct us in the right direction. And so it's actually an important part of our scientific process to find the mistakes early on and to learn from them and improve, uh, and improve our technology that way. When you're trying to push the state of the art, it's basically, the, the only reason it is a state of the art, the only reason there's nothing better is because no one knows what's better. <laughs> so you have to, if, and, and the reason no one knows what's better is usually because it's hard to figure out what's better. So um, the process of figuring out why the, current ideas aren't going to go fast enough or why they don't work as well as other things uh, is really time consuming and really error prone. And you have to be okay with trying new things and having them fail. I would say an interest in solving problems. That if you want to be an engineer you have to want to solve problems. The key point to keep in mind is that if you're not ever wrong you're probably not doing interesting enough stuff because you're not pushing your boundaries, you're not trying to challenge and do what you can. Don't be discouraged by the fact that you're not naturally good at it. I, I don't know anyone that just was always naturally good at all math and didn't have to uh, study really hard at some point. Perhaps most importantly is not thinking that we already know everything. Don't take something just because somebody's already said this is how it is, or more particular, don't take something where somebody says this is too difficult to figure out the answer. That's, I think, the best science comes when you really start questioning and challenging and pushing those boundaries and trying to do things that are difficult. I mean, in terms of how I got my start is uh, just more from the idea of being comfortable that you can ask questions, any question that you want. I never accepted when somebody told me, this is how it is or this is how it is done. It doesn't have to be an engineering related thing. Everything in my life, if they told me this this is how you are going to do, it always triggered the, a backlash at me. I almost didn't want to do it that way without understanding why it is done that way. So that question of why always occurred in my life. One thing now I love is just, you know, know as much as you want, can possibly about as many different fields because rather than telling yourself this is what I do and uh, that sort of breaks the fun. Uh, just not knowing what you will do next is really where interesting stuff is.